If you've ever played any mobile games as a kid, then chances are, you may have heard of a game called Pixel Gun 3D. Pixel Gun 3D is basically Minecraft, but with the guns. It's been one of the most beloved mobile games for millions of people before it became a shitty pay to win. And I played this game a lot as a kid, and that was before I discovered Team Fortress 2. I've recently gotten back to playing Pixel Gun 3D for a bit, and as fun as multiplayer can be, we're not going to be talking about the multiplayer, the gameplay mechanics, and the history behind the development, unfortunately. Because in this video, we're going to be talking about the story of Pixel Gun 3D, mainly the campaign mode, as I find the story to be very fascinating as a kid. Since World 5 is probably going to come out after 4 years, I thought it'd be cool to relive some childhood memories from an unsettling zombie apocalypse to whatever this is. So starting in World 1. The story begins on a farm somewhere near San Bloxisco, similar to San Francisco, California. We are introduced to the main protagonist of the story, Pixel Man, who we will refer to as Newbie throughout the rest of the video, sleeping in his home when he grabs his gun after waking up to some strange noises from these strange figures outside his window, to which they reveal themselves to be zombies. The zombies are coming. So Newbie goes around his farms to take out these zombies, Trying to figure out what was going on, he heard a cry for help and the sound of bells coming from the church, so he rushes there to help them. But it was already too late as the church was already overrun by monsters. He then found an evacuation plan next to the dead person, so he decides to go to the city, but it was already overrun by monsters again. He then finds a hospital entry card which can be used to go inside the hospital, hoping to find answers and... Oh. Oh fuck. Oh shit. Well, that was a terrible idea. Newbie then spots a helicopter and decides to go after it, but he needed to cross the bridge and defeat a horde of monsters. And this big monster thing. Unfortunately, the bridge has already been destroyed, and the helicopter crashed into the prison. With some monsters approaching him, he jumps off the bridge and swims towards the prison, and made it there. Yet another horde of monsters later, he went up to the top of the prison, where the helicopter crashed. He then found a top secret file, which is the location of Area 52. He jumps into the ocean, again, and swims towards the forest, hoping the place is still safe. Well, that was a night he'll never forget, so a bit of walking later, he arrives at Area 52, only to find some aliens, this alien professor, and some very strange experiments. But he also found some nerd, which is not me by the way, hiding inside this UFO. He gives Newbie a map of the portal because it turns out the whole outbreak started because there are monsters coming from that portal. Newbie uses the jeep to drive to where the portal is located. The school. Ah yes, the school. Where everything is about to come to a close. He enters the school and what the fuck happened to the school? How is this place even a thing? After defeating the scariest monsters you can think of, he finds the portal that someone else dug up and remembers how sweet his home was before it was ruined by monsters. He then jumps through the portal, with the intention of destroying the source of monsters. And that is the end of World 1. So here is what we know so far. There is this mysterious portal from where the monsters came from, and ruined Newbie's world. That's it. That's all we know so far. Before we move on to World 2 to solve this mystery of how the monsters came into our world, did you guys know that Pyramid Head used to be the boss at this school? And not just that. There were other old bosses that used to be in this game before they got removed. As much as I do miss them, I do appreciate the devs for making the game more challenging, and more terrifying than the other. Now onwards to World 2. Newbie teleported to some sort of village when he hears a cry for help. So he rushes there, and finds an evil chicken man going after a schoolgirl. Hehe, <laughs> hello chicken. After defeating the evil chicken man, we now know what caused the monster outbreak. So the schoolgirl was digging in the schoolyard, when she found a portal, she went through it, and accidentally woke up the dragon, angering it to the point where the dragon sends all the monsters to Newbie's world. So basically, she is responsible for the monster outbreak. <sighs> Why the fuck would you wake up that dragon? But that raises some interesting questions. Where did the portal come from? Why does it exist? Did the dragon create that portal? We don't know for sure, but we know where the dragon lives, so the schoolgirl helps Newbie find the dragon to save the world and maybe answer some questions about the portal's existence. But first, they need to cross the desert and defeat some mummies, 
and this golem thing. They continue their journey to the Sky Islands for a place to rest up for the night. And it looks pretty safe. Or not. Wait, why is this pig green? After a good roasted dinner, Newbie and the schoolgirl are having some fun jumping through the floating blocks and arrived at this winter island where Newbie noticed the pumpkin-headed snowman moving, which turned out to be a monster. And then there are more monsters. After a bit of redecorating, they ride onto the floating ice sheet towards the Hell Castle where the portal to the dragon is located. But there are some scary shadows down there, which turn out to be some more monsters and the devil from the depths of hell. After defeating some demonic monsters, they finally found the portal to which they jumped in and teleported to the parallel world, where they have to face another horde of monsters. <sighs> it's always a horde of monsters. Then they finally face the dragon itself, the one source of monsters that destroyed Newbie's world. And after finally defeating the dragon, the dragon apologizes and agrees to chase down the monsters from Newbie's world. Finally, it's over. The world is saved. And now it's time we know the truth about the portal's existence. Oh wait, what's that? He said there's a much bigger problem. What could that be? They're all made of blocks. So that's it, huh? Apparently the question of why they're all blocks is much more important than the end of the world. So important that the characters are becoming self-aware of themselves. And thus, the dragon gives Newbie and the schoolgirl a ride to solve the biggest mystery of why they're made of blocks. And that is the end of world 2. So everything we know so far is that some kid found this portal in the school and accidentally woke up the dragon, which caused this whole series of events to begin with. And after defeating the dragon and saving the world from an apocalypse, we now have this new mystery to solve on why we're made of blocks. <sighs> Honestly, I thought this is where the story would end. And even after two more worlds, we still don't know why the portal was there to begin with. So it's safe to assume that the dragon created that portal for unexplained reasons. Another thing I would like to add is that World 2 killed off this spooky, scary vibe World 1 had. But in my opinion, it does kind of make sense considering that the monsters came from another world, very different from Newbie's world. Anyways, moving on to World 3. Several hours later, they arrived at the swamp, which appears to be floating for some reason. Unfortunately, there is a barrier that the dragon can't pass through. So Newbie and the schoolgirl bid farewell to the dragon and went on without them. Moments later, they stumble upon these swamp monsters, including this giant spider. After retrieving the key from the spider, they use the key to unlock their castle, to which the wizard welcomes them in a not-so-friendly way. After defeating the wizard, Newbie asks the wizard why everything is cubicle, to which he responds by explaining that the world was once a magnificent world, made by the great creator, but one day, there was an ugly monster that turned the whole world into blocks. What kind of monster turned everything into blocks? Nobody knows. And who is the great creator? Nobody knows too. But only the great creator knows how to change everything back to normal. So the wizard creates this portal to send them to where they can see their home from there. Which turns out to be a space station occupied by aliens. Great. They've been tricked by an old wizard. And now they have to fight some aliens, including this alien professor which is the same boss as the one from Area 52, but only this time. It's riding on a UFO, with explosive rays. After defeating some aliens, they put on some spacesuits, and got onto the UFO, and flew back to their world, and landed on a Megapolis. Of course, the military mistakes them for aliens, so they gotta take them out, and they were kind of a pain in the ass to deal with. Then they found some jetpacks, which can be used to fly towards the great creator's home. Newbie breaks into his home, and finds the great creator hiding behind the couch, who is actually your average game developer. But we finally know why the world is made of blocks. The creator was working on a wonderful game, as he explained, when an unrecoverable error was made. So unrecoverable that it changed the game code entirely, and transformed the whole world into blocks. And for some reason, no one seemed to notice that they're made of blocks until the dragon brought it up to newbie. Luckily, they can still fix this mess, and turn everything back to normal. One bad pun later, Newbie was given a VR headset to go inside the virtual world to defeat this evil bug. Right after dealing with these code monsters, and these code dragons are really annoying to deal with. Right after defeating the evil bug, the bug suddenly turns Newbie into a new bug, and now he is trapped inside the internet. 
And that is the end of world 3. Wow, there is a lot to go over. So the creator was making this game. Then the evil bug turned everything into blocks, which the dragon becomes aware of it. Then the schoolgirl wakes the dragon, which angers the dragon, to make them send all the monsters into newbie's world. At least it's what I gathered so far. Now that the evil bug is defeated, we don't know if the whole world is truly back to normal, since newbie is now trapped inside the internet. Where has the story gone to? Maybe we'll see how the story plays out in World 4 and... <sighs> well, time to go back to hard mode and get all the remaining stars. Alright, after a bit of grinding, a bit of microtransaction, some tricks to learn, and so many ads to watch, I finally got all the remaining stars and unlocked World 4. What the fuck am I doing with my life? It has been either a day, a month, or possibly three years since Newbie has been trapped inside the internet. He then noticed the light shining above him, which turns out to be a crane picking him up into a ship. This Morpheus looking guy is the captain of the ship and is about to tell Newbie something, but was interrupted by a group of droids attacking the ship. So Newbie went out to defend the ship until every single one of them is destroyed. Not sure why the captain calls him player though. But anyways, after barely fighting them off, the captain tells Newbie that there is an entity known as Cubic, who has created games inside the web and traps people, forcing them to play a variety of games and making sure they don't escape back to the real world. Fortunately, the captain tells Newbie that he plots to start a revolution to free everyone from Cubic. In order to do so, they need help from the three champions. Who are the champions? They are the most powerful players in Cubic's games, and Newbie is tasked to recruit them. Starting with the champion of Kubota 2, though he is currently in battle, so Newbie is gonna have to defeat him. After defeating the champion of Kubota 2, the next champion Newbie needs to recruit is the Teleportal Champion, only he has the ability to create a portal to Cubic, though it appears that he is obsessed with finding cake. Hmm, I wonder why that sounds familiar. Newbie gets attacked by some robotic defenses, and then this cake thing reveals itself. Now that all the robots and the cake are taken care of, Newbie recruits the Teleportal Champion and is now ready to recruit the final champion, the Parkour Champion. Turns out we need him to turn off the defense system in Cubic Sedato. So to recruit him, Newbie is gonna have to beat his obstacle course, while defeating some animatronics along the way. Now that all the champions are recruited, they arrived at the Citadel to stop Cubic once and for all, not before the admin shows up and takes form of Newbie, and then clones themselves. So they have to defeat all the clones and the admin, which are pretty annoying to deal with, so I had to learn some tricks to beat this level, and finally break the defense systems, leaving only Cubic itself to defeat. The Teleportal Champion creates a portal to Cubic, but unfortunately, only one can go through, so naturally, Newbie goes through the portal. After all, he is the main protagonist of the story. He defeats all of his minions, and finally, he defeats Cubic once and for all and frees everyone from the internet. Hooray! Then a high score shows up, and Newbie realized that this is all just a game, called Cubic Revolution. Then he teleports back to where it all started, floating inside the abyss of the internet. The whole series of events begins to repeat, and at this point, he starts to understand how the game works and is left trying to figure out how to escape. And that is the end of World 4, and possibly the last we'll ever see of Newbie. For all we know, he may be trapped forever, or maybe one day he'll eventually break free from this game. That is if World 5 comes out. I would recap everything that has happened in the past 4 worlds, but I think we all know where this is going so let's just skip to my closing thoughts. So I guess that's that. The entire story of Pixel Gun 3D. So far. Now a few things I want to say about this story is that what the fuck is going on? This game used to be scary as shit, and now it's just silly as shit. I thought this is a story about saving the world from a zombie apocalypse and not this weird story about a literal simulation. But I'll give props to the devs for making the game more challenging as the levels progress. But the story itself? I really miss this eerie vibe the game had. Like, if they want to keep making more levels in the campaign mode, they could have at least expanded the story from World 1 to World 2, 
And besides, we still don't know why that portal even existed in the first place, as explained in the wiki. So I can only assume that the dragon created that portal. But since World 3 and 4 already came out, at this point, I really don't care about the story, because I'm rather curious about what will happen in World 5 and how the story will end. Since Newbie became the new bug, how will he be able to escape the internet? And what is life like outside the internet now that the evil bug is defeated? Will we also finally get an answer about the portal's existence? Who knows? But once World 5 comes out, will I be able to play it and possibly make a video about it? We'll see about that.